I'm 28, male, and my sister Jenny, female, 25, has always been a massive attention hog. I know that's a really toxic thing to say, but that's literally been the case ever since I became a teenager. We were really close during our childhood, but as we got older, Jenny basically decided that it was going to be a competition between me and her to vie for my parents' affection. I sometimes think that she went out of her way on purpose to put our parents in a tough spot. Like, if I had a game on Saturday, she would want to organize a party on the same day and other things like that. Mom and Dad didn't always skimp out on my events, though. And for the most part, they called Jenny out whenever she tried stuff like this. But there were other ways in which she constantly tried to get their approval, which I couldn't achieve. Again, I know I sound like an a-hole for saying this, but it genuinely felt like Jenny would study our parents and mold herself to be the ideal daughter. She would go to the classes that they wanted her to go to, make the friends they wanted her to make, and never stand up to our parents. I wasn't like that, and I ended up becoming my own person. Of course, I never disobeyed my parents in the sense like I ran around doing drugs and getting girls pregnant, but sometimes I would do things that I was interested in, and not my dad, for example. Due to how closely Jenny tried to replicate the template our parents had set for her, she did become the favorite in their eyes, even if it's only implicit. So... Even though Jenny couldn't take all the attention in those days, she was basically one step away from it. And I mean, the worst part was that she only did stuff with mom or dad in a very clinical way, as if there was code in her head that went, if I go golfing with dad, he'll like me, plus 40%. It was really disturbing. She even teased me about it once, saying, Oh, Pete, you don't know the tricks it takes to get on mom and dad's good side. <laughs> yeah, because I'm not trying to trick them, lol. Anyhow, the older we got, the more our relationship soured. And by the time I was 24, I was barely talking to my sister. When she moved abroad for work, I was genuinely quite thankful. During the pandemic, Jenny also ended up getting married and we unfortunately could not visit her. This made my parents feel obviously distraught and I completely get where they were coming from. I was planning on proposing to my lovely partner, Alice, at the same time, but I decided against it since I didn't want to take attention away from Jenny's wedding. We participated online as best we could and after things had quieted down, I announced my engagement and the wedding was set for 2023. Jenny was invited as well, and it was the first time she'd be in the U.S. after a long time. She decided to make the most of it and ended up coming to stay with our parents with her husband for six months or so, choosing to work remotely during this time. When she arrived, she also announced that she was in the first trimester of her pregnancy. This was big news for us as a family, and I was happy for my sister as well. However, Things started going downhill after her old habits started surfacing again. She began planning out her baby shower months in advance with as much zeal as my wedding. I couldn't get any input from mom and dad about things relating to my wedding because they were too busy spending time with Jenny. And she even gloated about it passive aggressively. Then the real frick up happened. She set the date of her baby shower on the same day as my wedding. As soon as I found out, I blew a fuse. We had a family meeting and I told my parents how unfair this was, but literally the only person who was kind of on my side was Jenny's husband, of all people. He couldn't say much since my sister was glaring at him all the time, but he thought that since I had announced the date first, it wasn't fair for him and Jenny to take over afterwards. Then Jenny came in with a whole speech about how she was in the country after so long, how we had missed her wedding and not even tried to come visit. Like what? This was just stupid and superficial guilt tripping and it's not like we didn't try to come. We were literally have been arrested if we did. When I turned to mom and dad and said, well, what do you think of this? Do you seriously think this is fair? 
My dad responded with, OP, the thing is, Jenny makes a lot of good points. Who knows when she'll be back here again? And that's the only date which works for her. We miss our daughter and, well, you're here in the States. Can't you reschedule? Or can we come later? I don't know, kiddo. I'm with Jenny on this one. After that point, I basically gave up on arguing. I left with an ultimatum. If my parents weren't at my wedding, they were no longer my parents. I came home and told Alice about it, and she was understandably furious about how I was treated. She also agreed that we couldn't exactly shift the date of our wedding because we'd already made down payments, and the venue was booked every other day. I sighed and decided I'd go ahead without my parents there, and that's what we did. Everyone was outraged at my parents for their choice, and the other family members who were invited were disgusted with Mom, Dad, and Jenny. I wasn't too shy about telling people about my ultimatum, too. And I guess word got through to mom and dad. Maybe earlier they thought it was an empty frat, but I was dead serious about it. Without telling me, they showed up at Alice and my flat and congratulated us on our marriage. Two whole days after the marriage had happened. I casually told them I was busy packing for our honeymoon and I had no interest in talking to them. As I had told them before, they were no longer my parents. My mom burst into tears and said that I was being too harsh, and my dad also tried to apologize, but I was having none of it. Alice witnessed all of this, and I guess their emotional outburst had an effect on her. She thinks that after we come back from our two-week honeymoon, I should at least try and speak to them. Meanwhile, Jenny hasn't reached out to me, and from what I remember, her flight is in a few days. AITA, if I don't want to have a relationship with my parents over this? Update one. So while I was on my honeymoon, I got a text from Jenny where she blamed me for ruining mom and dad's lives. I couldn't believe the audacity and told her that it was on her for trying her stupid attention-grabbing tactics again. I mean, it would have been tough, but she could have had the baby shower on literally any other day. Instead, she chose to manipulate our parents and basically convince them to not attend one of the most important days of my life. I called her a lot of terrible things, mostly narcissist with her head up her ass and blocked her. It's my honeymoon and the whole experience is going to be soured by this if I keep accepting contact with these guys. I think I'll just keep my phone far, far away from me so I can be with my wife. And then when I get back home, I'll sort things out. That also means no updates here, guys. So just bear with me. Update two. Just got back yesterday and my extended family has blown up my Facebook with texts. My parents have apparently spiraled at losing their son and a lot of the older members of the family are saying I should at least be low contact with them in order to keep their spirits up. I don't know if I want to, honestly. I feel like I need my sister to apologize to me at the very least. But she's left the country again, leaving me behind to take the flack. Of course, a lot of people think she's in the wrong, but they also think since I'm the one who's here, the responsibility falls to me to fix things with my parents. But at the end of the day, it'll entirely be my decision. Alice did think that I should speak to my parents after the honeymoon, but after I told her a little more about the full context of my relationship with Jenny, she thinks it's too complex to be decided by someone except me, so I'm thankful she's not forcing me to make a choice. After everything that has happened and I've cooled down a little, I do think it's okay to speak to my parents again. But I definitely can't continue with the preferential treatment they give to my sister. I'll try and initiate contact with them, but I think it's only fair if I tell them I need to hear that they were in the wrong for missing my wedding. So I call mom and dad and told them about my feelings and surprise, surprise, they still armed and awed around the idea of saying they were in the wrong. I think that proved a lot more than I expected and I don't have any guilt about cutting them off now. I can't believe I thought they would be able to give me a proper apology. On the flip side, Jenny called and told me that she had realized that she was in the wrong. Apparently her husband got to know about the family situation and ended up blowing up at her for causing rift in the family. I guess he was willing to stick up for his perspective more than I thought. I told her that I've accepted her apology, but that doesn't mean I'm going to initiate contact with my parents. 
I guess the phone call was still a little raw, and to be honest, I am sick and tired of being the second choice for them. I feel like they only took towards me when Jenny isn't around, and that's not a good way to parent. I'm okay with being no contact, at least until I can see a visible change in my parents. NTA, and I feel like there's more toxicity from your parents than Jenny because they're the ones who are enabling this behavior. They should have shut it down long ago, IMO. NTA, I feel like you won't ever get a straight, honest apology from any one of these three. Edit. I read the last update, and to be honest, even then, she only apologized after her husband called her out. You deserve better than this kind of toxic family, OP. Next story. I, 28, male, went to school for computer science and work in tech where I make good money. In 2021, I decided to pursue my passion for writing and enrolled in an MFA program. Because my house is relatively close to campus and I enjoy entertaining, I started hosting a casual get-together for the cohort. It's small, only about 10 people. Every month or so, and it helped us all become closer friends. The parties are nicer than a dorm party. Think wine and cheese, but nothing super fancy. In 2022, a new class of students came in and I invited them to the parties as well. One young woman, 22-ish female, and I got off on the wrong foot. During our first conversation, I mentioned my trip to Vienna last summer and she said, Oh, Vienna, in a sarcastic tone. Our conversation quickly tapered off after that. I was embarrassed because I could see how I might have come off as showing off, but I honestly did not mean for it to read that way. Subsequent to that, she has made it pretty clear that she does not like me, and especially because I have some money. She's always making snide remarks about how exploitative capitalism and rich people and landlords are. She knows I rent a room to another student. As a bit, she once pretended to be a sommelier and, and sarcastically appraised the wines I had on the table. I understand that not all of her resentment is directed at me specifically, but it still feels very uncomfortable. She came to the MFA straight from undergrad and leads a starving artist lifestyle, and I am sympathetic to that. But several of the other students share similar circumstances and political views, and I have never felt the same way around them. For the past few parties, I've hoped she would just not come. But she has attended every gathering. I have become a lot more self-conscious about what I wear, what food and drink I serve, and what I say in conversation. And it's honestly just exhausting and not fun to host when she's around. So I would like to explicitly stop inviting her. It will definitely create drama since everybody else is still invited. Over the past two years, these parties have almost become semi-official events for the students in the program. So it definitely feels strange to exclude exactly one person. I know that it's ultimately my house and my party, so I am perfectly within my rights. But I also realize that I'm coming from a place of privilege, so I wanted a gut check. I'm sure she will just take it as confirmation that I'm the rich a-hole that she already thinks I am. But does Reddit agree? NTA, so this Debbie Downer is showing up to your house, eating your food and drinking your wine and still has the audacity to continue badmouth the host? No, you would be doing yourself a disservice if you didn't tell her she's not invited anymore. Now, doing it in a tactful manner is another thing. I recommend discussing her rude comments about you with a couple of your mutual friends. I'm sure they're made quite uncomfortable listening to her vitriol. You can then get the best tailor-made advice on how to remove her from your social circle. Teamwork is always helpful. Your headline is misleading. She is a rude guest, and for that reason, if you uninvited her, you would be NTA. Your parties are private and held in your home. They are not official school events. She has no automatic right to attend and then abuse her host. But you should call her out publicly first so that your reasons are very clear and she can't turn this situation around on you. NTA, basically, this woman seems to have a huge axe to grind with people who have money and she likes to take it out on you. In her mind, there's literally nothing you could say or do to change her perception of you. You're a rich a-hole. Even if you're as kind as Jesus or Gandhi, as intelligent as Einstein and as wise as Solomon, 
Honestly, just uninvite her. Let her spew whatever garbage she wants. You can always explain to anyone who cares why you did. She shows up and basically aggressively disrespects the host. That is just really bad manners, regardless of her views, and regardless of how much money she has or does not. Next story. My mom has a daughter, Amy, 27, female, with a man called Brian. He left her while she was pregnant, but stayed in Amy's life. When my mom met my dad four years later, Brian started causing trouble and turned Amy against my dad and later against me and my younger sister. Amy was not kind to us over the years. Mom and Brian were in and out of court fighting over what he was doing. Mom had Amy in therapy to get her behavior to improve, but nothing helped. My mom's side of the family all struggled with having Amy around. She was always going out of her way to shit on my dad or to be mean to my little sister and I. A few times she called us names in front of our cousins that my aunts and uncles hated them hearing. F-U-C-K face, retard, etc. And we're worried they would mimic, especially the little ones. One time at one cousin's birthday party, dad was in charge of taking photos and she started yelling out that he stank, that he was ugly, weak, pathetic, etc. Mom would always step in and pull her away, and honestly, it only ever bothered Amy when Mom was visibly mad. Sometimes Mom would try to compose herself and just be cool and collected with her, but Amy wanted Mom to not be mad at her, and she wanted them to be close. She just didn't want the rest of us. It was a relief when Amy decided to stay with Brian. I remember a few things about him from the time Amy was still coming around. Mom and Brian had 50-50 custody. He was always such an a-hole. Mom's family kept trying to include Amy and be there for her. But last weekend, they hosted a family reunion to get together with relatives we hadn't seen in forever, or some of us hadn't even met. And Amy wasn't invited. My grandparents said they'd had enough, and my aunts and uncles agreed. After the party, Mom asked them if it was really so much better without Amy around, and they said yes. Mom then noticed that I had been much more happy at the party and even showed up early to help out, and we talked, and I admitted to her that I was glad Amy hadn't been there. I told her it was the first party I could remember where she didn't make it awful. Mom was so upset, like she actually started to cry and she admitted that she knew it wasn't easy for the rest of us and she was sorry. And she just wanted everyone to get along or at least for Amy to have grown out of the shit Brian had told her. We hugged it out and everything. But then mom called a few days ago and told me she needed me to keep thoughts like that to myself. She said it hurt her a lot and it was insensitive to say it to her because Amy is still her daughter even if she is behaving badly. I told her I understood and that maybe we should just not speak about this stuff in the future. Mom got mad and told me to just not say I'm glad her oldest child isn't around. Now I feel really bad. NTA, while it's true that Amy is her daughter, what you said doesn't sound bad, especially after your mom noticed on her own how much happier you were without her there. But family is not a good reason to subject people to someone like Amy. And it's good if your mom realizes it's better for her to spend time with Amy one-on-one. -on -one. NTA, your mother asked people whether it was easier not to have her eldest around and got honest answers. Wonder if she had the same chat with her grandparents. I think your half-sister has never given up on her dream of her parents back together. And you and your family are huge barriers to that. So she tries to push them away and get all her mom's attention. Therapy would help. But your mom is an a-hole for noting your distress and now relief, asking about it and now being dismissive of it and asking you to mask it. This is the same as being a bigger person. She can't control Amy's behavior, but she can live in denial of how it is hurting people as long as she controls their ability to talk to her about it. Your feelings are valid. Next story. I live in a small two-story apartment complex, two buildings with about 20 units each. Each building shares a parking lot. My four-year-old son is special needs and is at a special needs preschool that sends a bus to pick him up and drop him off every weekend at 7.15 a.m. and 3.15 p.m. How it works is basically that the driver pulls up to the side of the parking lot closest to my unit. I'm on the first floor. 
The driver honks the horn a few times and I run outside with my son out of our sliding back door and get him on the bus. In the afternoon, same deal. I wait till I hear the honk and I run outside and get him off the bus. Once or twice, the driver has had to honk a second time because we weren't ready at exactly 7.15. Also want to note, we live in the Midwest and it's freezing cold most mornings, so it's not an option to wait outside. We've gotten two notes on our front door complaining about the honking and then today a neighbor said, that's been your fault this whole time. I've been wondering who's behind the honking. I don't see anything wrong with this system. My son is autistic and needs this special bus and we're not breaking any noise violations. I don't see what is unreasonable about this system we have set up, but we've had multiple complaints. My wife thinks we should stop the driver to stop honking and I have no intention of doing this. Our son is disabled and we are perfectly within our rights to get him to school as we see fit. A few honks twice a day isn't going to hurt anyone. She is embarrassed about the complaints and thinks we should do something differently, however. So I want to hear other points of view. So AITA? Of course, YTA. It's 100% your responsibility to be outside waiting for the bus. The honking is not the driver alerting you. It's the driver annoyed that literally every other parent is competent enough to have their kid ready and waiting for the bus. Just because you're lazy doesn't mean the rest of the apartment complex should suffer a harsh, disturbing noise first thing in the morning. Just posing a question. Your son is special needs, but the bus comes at literally the same time every day and drops him off at the same time every day. This doesn't have to do with accommodations to your son's needs. This has to do with your own scheduling, OP. You're on the first floor. Wait by the door, peek out a window for when the bus is pulling up morning and afternoon. Problem solved. While you say it's not legally a noise violation, having that bus honk while most people are waking up and again in the afternoon is annoying. Why TA? Why TA? And stop playing the my son is disabled card. The honking has nothing to do with him having autism and everything to do with your inability, laziness, to look out the window at 7.15 each morning. Stay tuned for more stories from Argo Relationships.